Hi there. My name is Keith Thompson. I'm with the Armadale Church of Christ here in Western Australia. And today we're continuing on with our series about the church. And today we're going to be looking at the workers of the church. When Jesus was on earth, he was criticized many times for, about going to the sinners and the tax gatherers. I want to know this, what he, how he replies to this. We start in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 11. And we read there, When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why is your teacher eating with the tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what, is, what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. We need to realize that the church is made up of those who have sinned. Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is not one of us who can call ourselves righteous in ourselves because all have sinned. And then in Romans 6.23, it goes on and says, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You see, without Jesus, the great physician, we would all be eternally lost. But in Christ Jesus, we are saved. We are washed clean of our sins. We read in Acts 2 and verse 47, at the end of that wonderful Acts chapter 2, where the church was established, we read there in verse 47, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. The church is filled with those who are lost, but now who are saved. Well, what is our responsibility now we are in the church? Well, I'll put it to you that we need to continue on the mission that Jesus gave us. He is our example. We need to follow in his footsteps. Notice on the night that Jesus betrayed, we read in, in John the 13th chapter, we're going to start reading in verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from supper and laid aside his garments and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. This is an amazing act that Jesus did. It was the job of the lowest person, the lowest slave in a household, to wash the visitor's feet. It wasn't the job of the master of the house, but Jesus bent down on his knees and showed service to his disciples. He explained it this. We pick it up in verse 12. So when he had washed their feet and taken up his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. But I gave you an example that you should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who was sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus gave us an example of service to our brothers. And that's what we have to do as workers in the church today. We have to serve one another. 
if Jesus could do it, if Jesus did it, we need to follow that example. Pride has no place in the Lord's, uh, in Lord's church. Humility is where we need to be. We need to be humble and servants in the Lord's church. In, math, in, in, sorry, in Romans chapter 12, we read about us being in the body of Christ. Notice Romans 12, 3 to 5. For through grace it has been given to me to say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to, th but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many, who are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. This figure of speech that Paul is giving us is, it deals with the body. The church is called the body of Christ. We are members of the body of Christ. And this ought to be easy for us to understand because we know how our bodies work. Our bodies isn't made up of individual parts that are not connected. In fact, if any part of the body is removed from the body, it dies. No, for the body to work, our human body to work efficiently, it works together. And so too with the body of Christ. We are not to think more highly of one another than we ought to, but we need to be humble in heart. Paul goes on uh, in verse 6. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us to it is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith. If service, in his service. Or he who teaches, in his teaching. Or he who exhorts, in his exhortation. He who gives with liberality. And he who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. What we have to do. We need to serve God with the skills that he has given us. We are workers in the church. Being a member of the Lord's church is not a spectator sport. Jesus expects us, every one of us, to go down on our knees and serve our brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, thank you once again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.